Hi guys, welcome back. So this is now the third video in our series on antibiotics. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about glycopeptides. This shouldn't be um, a long video because the main one that we're going to talk about is vancomycin, um, which does have some really important applications. Uh, but the reason it won't take too long is it's really just, um, it's a very similar mechanism to the penicillins. Uh, so again, if you haven't watched the video on uh, peptidoglycan, the first video in this series, that's going to be really important to understand how this drug works. Um, and, you know, if you still really can't really get your head around it, I'd go into a lot more detail when I explain the action of penicillin. And so hopefully, um, if you watch that video, this video will also make a bit more sense. So, glycopeptides. Uh, one thing, um, there was going to be a another video coming up on aminoglycosides. They have very similar names. Remember, um, though, that we're talking here about glycopeptides. They work on the cell wall like beta-lactams, very similar mechanism of action. Um, but as you can see, they're a lot more complicated. So they don't actually have that beta-lactam ring that we saw in the, in the beta-lactams, like penicillin, um, so the penicillins. But um, what you can see, it's very complex. Um, this guy here is vancomycin which it's quite likely actually that uh, you've um, probably been prescribed that or know someone that's been prescribed this at some point. It's quite a commonly prescribed drug. Um, it's probably the main antibiotic in this class um, that we talk about. So it's a glycopeptide, works in the cell wall. Uh, before we go into that, I just want to quickly highlight, I've mentioned the previous videos, gram positive versus gram negative, and I thought I should actually give you guys a photo of what that looks like. So these guys here, this is a gram-positive um, sample. So this is, these are the ones that have the thick peptidoglycan wall. These guys, gram-negative, have a very thin peptidoglycan layer in between two mem lipid membranes. Uh, so these guys have LPS and an outer membrane, as well as thin peptidoglycan. And, uh, you know, if you'd like, um, leave me a comment below and I can make a video on the gram staining technique if you'd like me to go over that. But anyway, in gram positive, these guys have a thick peptidoglycan wall. Um, some other kind of things, just some bacteria morphology. You can see that these guys are forming tiny little dots. Um, so we call that shape a cocci. So this is a cocci. So that is a gram positive cocci. And we'd actually describe this as a gram positive cocci forming clumps. Based on this morphology, I would actually probably say that this is Staphylococcus aureus, which is a gram positive cocci that forms grape like clusters. Um, so that's just a, uh, a fun little tidbit, I guess. And then over here, this is a gram negative uh, bacillus. So this rod shape here, uh, we call that a bacilli. And you know, it's, it's a little bit harder. This doesn't really have as many characteristics, but that could be something like E. coli, um, which is a gram negative for it. But there are a number of other things it could be. I think uh, like Klebsiella is another potential, although it doesn't have a capsule. So probably E. coli is probably a good bet. Um, cool. An important thing to note is because with our amino glycosides, oh, sorry, with our I knew I was going to get mixed up, with our glycopeptides and our beta-lactams, as they work on cell walls predominantly, the mo they have most of their effect in gram-positive bacteria. Uh, that's not to say that they can't work in gram-negatives. Um, the beta-lactams in particular, there are specific uh, beta-lactams that you can use which will um, specifically target gram negatives and have a broad spectrum. So we talked about how ampicillin is a broad spectrum antibiotic can work on gram positive and gram negative. But as we're working on the cell wall, gram positive tend to be more susceptible to these mechanisms. Um, an important thing about vancomycin is that vancomycin can actually only work on gram positive cells. So these guys here with the thick, pe thick peptidoglycan wall. That's because you can see here, it's a very large molecule and it's also got a lot of charges on it. It's got a very high charge density. Um, you know, we've currently shown it with all the um, hydrogens and things attached to the hydroxyl groups. But in reality, you know, if this is dissolved in a liquid medium, it's going to be ionized. Um, you're going to have very high charge density. So all of these are going to have, you know, O negs on them. 
um, you might have negative charges forming around your carbonyl groups, all that kind of thing. That's going to prevent it from crossing the lipid membrane that we see, the outer membrane and gram-negative cells. Um, so vancomycin in particular only works on gram-positive. Um, how does it work? So if we go back to this picture here, so remember this is the building block for peptidoglycan. And in order to make peptidoglycan, what happens is we have these transpeptidases which bind to this terminal D alley group and they chop that off. And when they chop that off, they then attach the pentaglycine chain from another building block and they link it to this D alley so that you kind of get uh, this kind of joining on here with the glycine. And again, have a look at my other videos if you are struggling to remember how this all works. So the transpeptidases bind to this DL group and then prevent. Uh, uh, so the transpeptidases bind the DL and then cleave that and attach the glycine group. Now, what vancomycin does is it actually binds this terminal DL. So let's see. The peptidoglycan, uh, sorry. The vancomycin binds to this terminal DL group and actually stops the uh, get out the transpeptidase. So the transpeptidase then comes in and tries to bind to the DL group, but it can't. And if it can't bind to that DL group, then it can't obviously cleave it. It can't get synthesis of that cell wall, and eventually it's going to die. Um, so. Again, it's very similar to the beta-lactams. It's got a two-stage kind of thing. So initially, it, by uh, preventing this binding, you get accumulation of defects in the peptidoglycan wall because the bacteria can't resynthesize. And as we said, in all living organisms, you're constantly having to resynthesize things, um, proteins, glycoproteins, uh, pept all those kinds of things, carbohydrates. They always need to be replenished because they're constantly getting damaged and misfolded and all those kinds of things. So if we stop this process, it, it actually stops the synthesis of the peptidoglycan wall. And because of that, you get defects accumulating. And so to help with that, the bacteria then goes and it clears the whole peptidoglycan wall. So we've got this bacteria here. It's got this really nice thick wall we're causing a few of these little defects to accumulate. And then the bacteria says, oh, something's wrong. Let's just try again. So knock out everything. Knock out this entire peptidoglycan wall before it can synthesize a new one. Water rushes in. The cell swells. And then eventually it ruptures. The membrane ruptures because that cell wall is really important for um, holding the cell together against that osmotic force. So the osmotic force ends up rushing in, lysing open the membrane, the bacteria dies. So that's how vancomycin works. Um, it's, um, again, like um, beta-lactams as well, it actually, because it's a bactericidal, it requires active replication of the bacteria. Um, because that's when most of the peptidoglycan synthesis is actually occurring as well. So we need to be careful about the kind of antibiotics that we mix together, because if we add a bactericidal antibiotic like um, beta-lactams or the glycopeptides with something that's going to slow bacterial growth, it's actually going to decrease the efficacy of the vancomycin or the penicillin or the ampicillin or anything like that. So... I'll put another lecture, another video up about this a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, really important concept there. Um, as with all antibiotics, resistance is um, developing. So uh, Enterococcus, um, it's a Enterococcus, uh, from the name, Entero, uh, lives in the gut. Cocci, it's a small, small gut-dwelling organism, um, part of our normal flora. It can develop resistance by replacing this D alley here with a oh sorry. We replace the D alla with a D lactone. So by replacing this, the obviously the bacteria also evolves so that its transpeptidase transpeptidase can still bind to the D lac. However, our vancomycin can't bind to that. 
Um, and so the, tr- the vancomycin doesn't work, the bacteria can keep making peptidoglycan, keep surviving. Um, so we call these kinds of enterococci VRE. This is vancomycin resistant enterococci. Okay. So now, as I said, enterococci, they're very common in everyone's gut. Um, not all of them have this resistance, um, but they're, they're very common. Um, they're just a normal part of the microbiota. They don't really cause a lot of issues. So you might be wondering why it really matters that they've developed resistance. Well, this is actually really scary. And if you, in the hospital, if a patient presents with vancomycin-resistant enterococci, they'll be isolated and specifically treated with a cocktail of antibiotics to try and clear that infection because VRE is very, very scary. We use vancomycin as our primary antibiotic to treat MRSA. So if you remember, that's our methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And this guy is pathogenic. It causes ulcers, cause, can cause sepsis, abscesses. And if it's resistant to methicillin, it's resistant to a whole bunch of our beta-lactams. So this is really worrying. Um, this is highly pathogenic. And we, our main, the main way that we treat this is with a, um, a high dose of vancomycin. In most cases, that will knock it out. However, this VRE, this vancomycin-resistant enterococci, can, it encodes that resistance, that D-lactone, on a plasmid. And if it gets exposed to, if MRSA and VRE are present in the same kind of person, then the VRE can actually transmit it's plasmid to the MRSA, making it resistant to the vancomycin as well, which means suddenly we have um, what we call VRSA. So vancomycin resistant staph aureus. If it so hap- so staph aureus in the gut gets the plasmid from van- from enterococcus, becomes vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus by replacing that D ala with a D lactone. If that then um, also develops resistance to methicillin, which most staph aureus are, you can, this is really bad news. Um, and you start to run out of things that you can treat it with. Um, and then you can start developing like extensively resistant staph aureus. Um, so this is vancomycin resistant staph aureus. Just on a similar note, we do also have this, um, It's called vancomycin intermediate staph aureus, which is a little bit weird, I know. Um, But basically what it means is that it doesn't have resistance per se to vancomycin. Um, So it means that if you treat this bacteria, this infection with only a small amount of vancomycin, it can grow in small amounts of it. But if you treat it with a large dose of vancomycin, it's still going to kill it, right? The way that uh, this produces resistance. It's not the same as vancomycin resistance. What it does instead is it actually just overproduces vancomycin, uh, sorry, peptido- peptidoglycan precursors. So rather than, than, you know, say a normal bacteria might be like this, Visa is going to look like this. Maybe not that dramatic, but you get the idea. It's overproducing this peptidoglycan. What that means is it kind of soaks up the vancomycin. So if you've got a low dose, you know, the vancomycin all gets lo- like localized to this little area out here. And yeah, it might inhibit um, pep- peptidoglycan it's just right out in the outer layers. But this inner layer is still nice and thick and strong. And it's, so it's if you've got a low dose... You mop up all the vancomycin and it doesn't kill the bacteria. However, you end up giving a monster dose to someone that's not obviously still within therapeutic limits. It's going to get all the way down and it's still going to kill that bacteria. So we call that vancomycin intermediate staph aureus. So key concepts from this is understanding that um, the glycopeptides like vancomycin, they bind to this terminal d allyl group. And by doing that, they inhibit transpeptidases indirectly in that manner. You can get resistance to vancomycin in the vancomycin-resistant enterococci by replacing the D-ala with D-lactone. That, that um, resistance gene is encoded on a plasmid, which then can then be transmitted to MRSA, which is scary because we usually treat MRSA with uh, vancomycin. And although VRE isn't uh, usually highly pathogenic, Staph aureus can be very pathogenic, and if that gets that plasmid and it's resistant to vancomycin, it can be very, very difficult to treat. Um, 
So that's how we get VRSA, and then we also have this concept of um, vancomycin intermediate staph aureus, which just overproduces peptidoglycan so that it um, uh, so it kind of mops up the excess vancomycin. Um, okay, so that's it for today's video. If you've got any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Um, but thanks for watching.